Hey guys, it's Wicked here. Now we're going to be asking a very simple, very basic question today. And that is, has Matthew Centoro changed? Ever since he made a few videos talking about how he needed more views and uh, I quote, needed you guys to give his videos a chance. You are right. And I made a video on that as well. It's been a while now, so I, I wanted to go ahead and see if he's, you know, if he's taking any criticism. And I'm not just talking about myself here. I think I was quite clear in that video that he might need to change some things up. I gave him some things here and there that were that I thought he could do to change. But I know for a fact there are a bunch of people giving him feedback in the comments of those videos. Before this video has even started, we've already stumbled into a problem. And let, and let me tell you what happened. I actually found out that he took those videos down uh, the the ones we're talking about here which i i can't even show you the thumbnails because i don't have them you can see the recordings on the screen you get the point but with that a lot of the comments and a lot of the criticism that i wanted to look into has also gone however you guys the ones who watched that previous video i made had some comments of your own we're just gonna have a quick look at those points of feedback to get an idea of what people think matthew just didn't adapt he got too comfortable and that is by black tiger God, thank you very much. The one thing you'll realize about YouTube when you become a YouTuber or you set up a channel is after you do a lot of research on, I guess, how to get subscribers, how to make content, how to grow your channel, there's a common thread that starts to occur. And that is that at some point, your channel will blow up. After you've made a whole bunch of videos that are fairly consistent in that type of content that are quite successful, once the YouTube algorithm finds your niche and starts targeting your videos at them, you'll get a lot of people binge watching your content for a while. And then that's it. You become relevant until you get shot down. That's right. Susan Wojak is going to take your channel down because the public interest changed. But the point I'm trying to make here is that you will be relevant for a certain amount of time. And Matthew Santoro has been quite relevant for a while. He made a lot of good content. I guess back in the day, the 2014 to 2015 Matthew Santoro was pretty damn interesting with all the creepy pastas, all the spooky videos. But then people grow up and they find other things to get interested into. Other things to get interested into. Dude, fix your grammar. I just learned of him a few weeks ago and his video reminds me of something you'd get at an elementary school book fair. Now, in all seriousness, he has very polished videos that are, I'll be honest, and look, this is, a, this is a rough criticism. It's something that you'd find a journalist doing. Hint, hint, BuzzFeed. I'm not actually bashing the editing because the person editing his videos is clearly doing a good job. But that's actually not the main point here. It's the fact that he hires his own writer to do the research and I would assume also write the script. You see, the thing is, right? I Look, me on a personal level, I'm just giving you guys an insight on my life as a massive YouTuber. The way I say things, the person that I am on YouTube is very true to who I am face to face. And this is, of course, my face. But the point I'm trying to make here is that you guys are hearing me as me. With Matthew, you're not hearing Matthew as Matthew. And I can prove this quite easily by looking at his videos that he creates on his YouTube channel versus how he is on Twitch. Here's an example. I'm going to finger your butthole. Nom, 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 nom. Let me finger that butthole. Nom, 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 nom. Nom, 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 nom. I just want to make it clear as well that it's obvious that people do act differently on YouTube versus real life and on stream. But the point I'm trying to make here is that it is quite dramatic. And I feel that if he was to either go off script a bit more or write his own script, there would be a much higher sense of authenticity. Not everybody can be a Charlie or Muda, but ain't nobody gonna babysit your ass either. Matthew Centoro was good then, but it's not so much any longer. You see, the thing is about Charlie and Mudaha is that you're watching them just being them. You're watching them for their personality. Do I care about setting up a virtual machine on my PC computer? No. Will I watch a whole video about it? Yes. Why? Because I like seeing this cheeky face on my screen. People watch you because they like you. Now let's actually see if he's changed his content since then. Okay. I want to see if he's done anything. But before we actually have a look at his most recent video, let's just have a quick recap at his older videos. Welcome back to the Freak Show. <laughs> but if any business is capable of doing that, it's Apple. Of course, unless Elon Musk eats the apple and then... Okay, no more fruit jokes. But what is certain is that they will come for us in the loneliest of places, and they will not stop until they scare us to death. 
So quick recap, he has polishing editing, he has his own writer, and you can see by the tone, by the pace, by the lack of authenticity, it's so manufactured and so robotic at times, it's just unreal. Personal opinion maybe, but that's what I'm getting from this. And yeah, I'll say this now, the topics are interesting, however, like I said before, if you don't change things up, the algorithm is going to leave you behind, hence the lack of views versus the amount of subscribers you have. I'm sure you have a very dedicated fan base, but I'm gonna be honest with you right now, not many people are looking at this kind of content. Now let's see if he's actually changed since then. And I'm sure you are all very curious to see if he has. Seen strange objects in the sky and even encountered frightening humanoids connected to their appearance and have been mocked and ridiculed by the press and the government. But now we live in an age of information where keeping secrets isn't as easy. And the US government has now been forced to admit that these strange objects, referred to as Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, or UAPs, are now being actively studied by experts. Ah, okay then. Let's analyze this video in a little bit more detail. It is wicked with science time with Wizard. It's clear that he's still using the same editor. I mean, it, it's pretty much identical to what he was doing before, and that's not a problem. Do you know what, man? Look, I'm totally fine with somebody else editing my videos, but unfortunately that's not the case because I don't have the money to do that. I actually kind of like editing my own stuff, man. It's It takes hours. It takes a lot of time. Look, I'm not going to say get rid of your editor, but if it really costs you that much and you're complaining about the, the, the costs in the first place, then maybe lower the specs for your videos. You got so many different jump cuts to so many different stock videos. It's actually insane. A lot of the edits and the constant cutting between things is in there for audience retention. But if you've got a good subject in the first place, people are just interested to watch it for what it is. You see this with a lot of commentary channels, a lot. This is the reason why I put Lord of the Rings Lego in my background, okay? I have it there as a background piece and I like to play around with it as well. I like to put my face in there, here and there, because it's fun. But it takes out a lot of these jump cuts that I would have to do. And I, honestly, if I was jump cutting all the time, it would take me ages to make a video. But I still get a fairly good amount of audience retention time because I try to focus on topics that I guess people are interested in. You see, if you have a really good hook at the beginning and introduce what you promised a bit later on, you'd have a really good retention time. That is probably one of the most important things, by the way, for YouTube. So if you're still watching this video right now, let me know in the comments below. Now, I can't sit here and say that Matthew has absolutely no involvement whatsoever when it comes to the writing and the material. And I'm not going to sit here and say that he stays on script 100% of the time, because I don't know that. But I'm pretty damn sure you being a fairly smart guy, I mean, look at that dome right there. Dome that I'm probably going to be familiar with soon. Got a bit of a receding hairline, guys. Nintendo 64 kind of thing. I honestly think that you could do your own research and writing and write your own script, and I think you would do very well with that. Look, I think I made it quite clear as to what I think is wrong with this channel and the type of content that Matthew creates. If you're going to start off somewhere, I think you need to start writing your own content. Try a slightly more freeform kind of approach. Bring some of what we see from Twitch into your YouTube videos. I think people will like that. I also think you need to start looking at other topics. Now, it doesn't mean you have to change up completely. There are plenty different topics in your niche, plenty different things you can do that will be really interesting. I'd personally love to see you do an investigation into haunted houses give a bit of backstory behind it, interview people in that area, and explore that place. It's just a recommendation, but personally, I would absolutely love to see content like that, and I'll happily sit down for an hour watching a whole video like that. This is going to be my last video on Matthew Santoro. I think I've said his name a million times now, and I'm sure you guys are fed up with it. So if you're still watching now, let me know who or what you want me to look into next. I'm always reading your comments, and I love hearing from you guys. See you in the next one. Goodbye.